still waiting on the July ADP report coming out momentarily. We are expecting uh, one, uh, just over one million jobs. Let's get to Dagan McDowell. What are you expecting, Dagan? I'm expecting a continued comeback, and I think that this is going to be an incredible indicator of how far the economy has recovered. Again, just in the months of June and May, we've recovered about 34 percent of the jobs that were lost oh, between February yeah. and, uh, and April. The, the number is out. Let's get right to Cheryl. Go ahead, Cheryl. Miss. It's a big miss, Maria. July ADP coming in with a gain of 167,000. The estimate was for 1.5 million. I can kind of explain why I think we saw such a weak number in this. The small business slowdown, uh, many economists have been talking about this because of the slowdown in the South and the West and the cases rising. Also, it's looking like manufacturing was also a weaker component of this report. Also, uh, just to add to this as well, that some of the high frequency data that some of the economists were pointing to for potential weakness in the number was travel numbers and also restaurant visits. They were seeing a decline in that. Now, this is certainly a rough number to watch, the gain of 167,000 versus the estimate of one and a half million. Much better than April, May, and June. Remember, the June number was 2.369 million gains. So weaker than that, we, obviously, it's just it's a rough number for the markets, Maria. We're looking at market reaction right now. Obviously, this goes into the Friday jobs report. Uh, but remember, ADP is private companies, 500,000 uh, U.S. companies are ADP clients. Here's what we're still expecting as of now. This may change for Friday's jobs report. 1.6 million payrolls added and the unemployment rate going down to 10.5 percent. But I have, Maria, uh, just a kind of a suspicion here as I send it back to you in the panel for reaction that the estimates for Friday's number may change. Back to you. Yeah, I mean, the market is losing some momentum. But, Dagan, you were right in terms of this recovery. We had very good numbers in May, very good numbers in June. And slowly but surely, we are seeing job growth. But, of course, I don't see how this miss is so substantial. I mean, this is a serious miss. It's a serious miss. And we have seen in recent weeks the number of first-time claims for unemployment benefits ticking up when they had been falling literally for, for months. I do think you have to ask the question, does the extra $600 per week that people are getting in terms of unemployment benefits, which did expire at the end of July, did that hurt hiring? Were people willing to take a new job if they were making more than what yeah, they we were being offered? It's a huge issue. There's a, there are a lot of studies that have been done, studies that some of which are questionable. But again, it does go to the fact of are people having trouble finding workers because they are not paying as much as unemployment's paying or was. It's a very good point. It's an ex excellent point, James. And this is something that lawmakers have been coming on this program now from the get-go of this pandemic to raise their hands about this $600 and uh, giving really very little incentive to go back to work. The president wants the economy to reopen. Well, the employees don't want to come back. They're making more to stay home. Yeah, I think uh, Kevin Brady the, uh, from the House Ways and Means Committee was on your show a few months ago saying we ought to have incentives for people to go back to work, not to stay home. I, also, uh, the you clearly saw some of the uh, restrictions uh, either not being eased or in some cases like California being reimposed uh, as we've had this sort of renewed uh, media panic over the virus. I, I think after the robust May and, and June growth, this is really a signal that we, uh, we need to reopen. We can't, we need to reopen fully. We gotta stop all the rules and restrictions and, and allow people to exercise common sense to protect others. But we have to have an economy. The, the uh, federal government's gonna borrow four and a half trillion this fiscal year, uh, enough. We need the private market to run and provide the wealth, which ultimately gives us good health care. Yeah, I mean, we need the confidence for people to recognize that it's time to get back, Maddie. Marie, you talk about confidence. The thing we have to remember is that the uh, CARES Act, the supposition there was that we would be in a much better situation than we're in in July. That means that the PPP support that was giving support to businesses to keep their employees on payroll, that was originally supposed to run on in July. Obviously, the UI extension expired last week. These kinds of support systems that were built into the base case for what the economy and what the public health situation would look like right now are expiring. It shouldn't be surprising to 
to anyone that we're seeing a bad jobs number in July. I think on Friday we'll probably see that as well because businesses and employers do not have certainty looking ahead into the next few weeks, months, and maybe even years. Remember, the CBO is telling us that we're going to see unemployment in double digits even next year as a result of these shutdowns. Now, I understand that there needs to be a plan to get businesses reopened, but the thing we have to remember as well is that governments shut down otherwise healthy businesses. They can't make up that demand out of nowhere. So we need to get a plan and public policy in place that gets employers confident so they can get those workers back hired again. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same situation for months to come. Yeah, I just want to point out that Nancy Lazar, who's been a regular guest on this program, told us that there would be significant downside risk to the July payroll. She said that weeks ago. We'll be right back looking at technology on a tear. Stay with us.